Things have been rather quiet over at Nissan India in the last couple of years and they haven't had an all new launch in quite some time. But that's all changed in 2019 with the introduction of this, the Kicks. Now when we first drove it, we found it to be quite a strong product with bold styling, a big, spacious, comfy interior that's really well appointed and very well equipped and tough underpinnings. But then it would have to be a strong product because it's just joined one of the toughest segments on the market mid-size SUVs. And that's why we've brought along what we think are two of its fiercest competitors, its own Alliance cousin, the Renault Captur, and the darling of the sales charts, the Hyundai Creta. Now, each of these cars has its pros and cons, but which one should you go home with? That's what we're here to find out. But hey, before we go any further, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. And tell us in the comments what you think about the kicks and whether you'd pick it over one of these two. As first impressions go, the Kicks makes a very strong one. It's the longest of the three and also looks larger in the metal than you might think, with a generous 210mm of ground clearance lending it a strong stance. The design deftly mixes crossover and SUV proportions, and elements like the snout-like nose, contrast roof and gently raked tail work really well. Also, the well-defined lines and edgy detailing are new-age Nissan and make the Kicks look very international. The Capture has a very European look to it too, but the decidedly crossover-like design hasn't caught the fancy of Indian buyers. In fact, the Capture's biggest weakness in India is that it simply doesn't look SUV enough. Still, you can't deny that it has loads of road presence. It's a big car and the chunky squat stance, also with 210mm of ground clearance, sure help the look. With its relatively boxy shape and upright stance, it's the Creta that conforms closest to the traditional SUV shape. The 2018 facelift brought with it a larger grille, amongst other updates, adding some more personality. However, while the Creta is the tallest, it is the shortest in length, and at 190mm sits closest to the ground. It doesn't quite have the visual mass of its rivals. Time to step inside. Open the Kicks' doors and instead of the dull and drab greys we're used to from Nissan, what you'll find is a cabin that's premium and inviting. There are quilted leather seats, a freestanding 8-inch touchscreen, and a swathe of leather across the dash that adds greatly to the premium feel. Even things like the part digital instruments are nicely executed. However, many of the plastics look low-rent and then there are ergonomic issues too. The front seats are set a bit too high, the footwell is narrow and lacks a dead pedal, and the fixed center armrest fouls with your arm when you use the handbrake. The Capture's cabin has the same shortcomings as its Japanese cousin, with the added issue of inadequate in-cabin storage and cubby holes. The Renault's front seats seem set even higher than the Kicks, so taller occupants will be looking down at the road rather than straight at it. And frankly, the cabin's hard and scratchy plastics are not in keeping with the SUV's price. It does have its interesting elements though. The front seats are plush, the dash is neatly laid out, and the butterfly look instrument console with its digital speedometer is unique too. Everything is a lot more conventional inside the Creta. Sure, the dashboard is looking a bit dated now, but everything is within easy reach. There's no shortage of storage space and it's logically laid out. It's well finished too, with the most consistent plastic quality. Now, over to the back. Now, as you can probably tell, there's quite a lot of space in the back seat of the Nissan Kicks. Granted, I'm not the tallest person, I'm only 5 foot 8 and the driver's seat is set to my position, but there's still plenty enough room for you to stretch out. However, I do believe they could have squeezed a little bit more space out of this size of car. That said, there's a lot to like here. I like the quilted leather, I like the brown shade, which is better than the passe beige, and I like that you get a good view out. The only thing that I'm not too sure about is the cushioning of these seats, which feels a tad firm. Now, as you might imagine, the back seat of the Renault Capture is quite similar to that of the Nissan Kicks. You get a similar seating position and a similar amount of room. They've even got their own take on the quilted leather upholstery. There are a few differences, of course. The upholstery itself is white, which is quite prone to staining, as you can see on this slightly older car. I do like the fact that the cabin is lit entirely by LEDs and this rear quarter glass behind me does let in a little bit more light, which is nice. However, I don't like the fact that the door pads are almost entirely hard plastic, which just doesn't give you a good feel when you rest your arm on it and the door pockets are woefully tiny. 
Now amazingly, despite having the smallest exterior dimensions, it is the Hyundai Creta's back seat that is by far the most spacious and arguably the most comfortable as well with cushioning that's just a little bit softer. It also feels nicer thanks to more soft touch materials wherever you make contact and it's less of a step up from the road into the cabin in case your passengers are elderly. It's not all perfect though as it does have a very high window line which does make you feel hemmed in and that's only exacerbated by the all black colour scheme in the cabin. In the battle of the infotainment systems, it's a close fight between the Kix's 8-inch touchscreen and the Creta's 7-inch unit. The Nissan system is slick and has sharper, higher resolution graphics but catches reflections. The Creta's unit is not as high res and though it's easy to navigate, it doesn't feel as modern and cutting edge as the Kix's one. Capture buyers will be disappointed to learn the 7-inch touchscreen doesn't come bundled with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, although we hear that will be incorporated sometime soon. The Kix gets a segment first 360 degree parking camera while the Creta is the only one to get an auto dimming mirror, a powered driver's seat, a sunroof, wireless phone charging and now even cooled front seats. However, it misses out on LED headlamps, auto lights and auto wipers which you do get on the Kix and Capture. In terms of safety kit, all three SUVs come with ABS, ESC and Hill Start Assist. The top spec Creta goes one up on its rivals with six airbags while the Kix and Capture feature four each. The three SUVs are very close on boot capacity, but again, it's the Creta that's the best shaped and most usable. And with that, it's time to get moving. This 1.5 litre K9K engine is something we've been familiar with for a long time thanks to Renault and Nissan in India. It makes 110 horsepower and in this car it's made it to a 6 speed manual gearbox. There is a bit of lag before 2000 rpm and you have to learn to drive your way around that but it can be quite annoying in the city. Luckily the gear shift action is at least quite positive and the clutch is not too heavy. And yes as you can probably hear there is a bit of a grumble from under the bonnet but at least it's only just a grumble and not a loud roar like you get in some other diesel engine cars. Once you get this motor in its stride though it really feels strong enough and it's especially effective out on the highway. What I also like about the Nissan Kicks is the sense of security and solidity you get from behind the wheel. The car always feels really planted especially at high speeds and the steering feels weighty and gives you a good amount of confidence. And then there's the ride, it just feels rock solid. It does really well at absorbing bumps at low speeds or high and it doesn't really get phased much. You and your passengers will barely realize it inside the cabin. The weighty steering and the sorted chassis also give you a lot of confidence to push this car hard around corners and that's only a good thing. So ultimately with the chassis and the engine and the steering, this car could actually be quite a lot of fun when you get a move on. It's not entirely surprising that the experience from behind the wheel of the Renault Capture is really quite similar to that of the Kicks. They do after all share the same platform and a lot of familiar bits inside the cabin. One of the things that is familiar is the driving position and I'm not entirely sure that's a good thing. You see you are perched quite high up like you might expect in an SUV but some might find it a little bit too high and that's because of the low sloping roof line. I'm quite short but taller passengers I've known to be quite close to the roof when driving this car even at its lowest seat setting. And yes, while a tall seating position is what you want in an SUV, what you don't really expect is A-pillars that stretch so far forward, creating quite a blind spot. And that long dashboard in front of you is really what takes away from the SUV experience. These are things you'll also find in the Nissan Kicks, by the way. And one more such thing are the wing mirrors. They look quite cool from the outside, but they are a tad too small and don't give you a great field of view, especially the one on the far side. But the capture also inherits a lot of the Kix's strengths, like the engine and chassis, which are pretty much exactly the same. One area where the capture does seem to have a slight edge over the Kix, however, is in the suspension. At lower speeds, it does feel a little bit firmer, and that means you can feel bumps a little bit more than you can in the Nissan. 
like so. But as you start to pick up the pace, it seems to absorb bumps even better than the Nissan does, which is really saying something. The other thing that's quite prominent in both these cars and a little bit more so in this Renault is steering shock. When you go over bumps mid-corner, it kicks the steering back in your hands and that can be a bit unsettling on our roads when you're trying to go fast. The reason for this, of course, is that the kicks and capture use an old-school hydraulically assisted power steering while the Creta uses electronic power steering. The former offers more feel and feedback, but the latter is just lighter and easier at low speeds. So overall, the capture feels a lot like the kicks to drive. Quite sophisticated, but also very solid. Now we're no strangers to the Hyundai Creta over here at Autocar India. It's been a strong contender and a frequent comparison test winner. And it's no wonder it sells in such high numbers. Hyundai have really managed to tick all the boxes with this thing. With 128 horsepower from a 1.6 litre diesel engine, this is easily the most powerful car in this test. But the thing about the Creta is how it delivers that power. It's smooth and linear with a much wider power band. There is of course some turbo lag here too, but it's not as pronounced as it is in the other two cars. And where in those cars, the power comes in in one strong heavy hit, here it's spread a lot thinner over a longer rev band. What also helps is that the clutch and the gear shift action are significantly lighter than either of those two cars. They aren't too bad on their own, but this is just like butter. The downsides to the Creta come in the dynamics department, where it feels more like a jacked up hatchback than it does an all out SUV. In and around town it's just fine, you get a nice light steering which makes it easier to maneuver and the ride is soft and good at taking low speed bumps. But the moment you pick up the pace you realize that this light steering lacks a lot of feel, doesn't give you a lot of confidence and that the really soft suspension makes you bounce around a lot. So does that make it a bad car to drive? Oh, certainly not. In fact, with this stonking engine, you could have quite a lot of fun with this thing. It's just that it doesn't feel very SUV-like, and that's a bit of a shame. In the performance stakes, it's no surprise that the most powerful car, the Creta, is the quickest in flat-out acceleration. What is interesting is that the Renault and Nissan are both quicker in overtaking or in-gear acceleration, owing to their stronger mid-range. So, who comes out on top then? The Capture is a solidly engineered product that feels built for India. What also works in its favour is its price tag. Even in top spec platine form, it costs 13.25 lakh rupees ex showroom, which makes it great value for money. However, it falls short on cabin quality and it isn't the most convenient SUV to drive in town. And then, there's a subjective issue of the Capture's looks. The Kicks easily goes one up on the Capture with a more likeable design and with its better finished cabin and longer feature set it also feels the more premium, yet it's every bit as rugged making for a more wholesome package. This top spec XV premium option pack is pricier but you also get a whole lot more for your money. But good as it is, the Kicks has a few rough edges and lacks the overall plushness and refinement of the Creta. And like the Renault, Nissan doesn't have the strongest of dealer networks. If your daily route comprises bombed out roads or long distances, the Kicks would be the right choice. But let's face it, most mid-size SUVs are mainly city bound with only occasional out of town drives. And that's where the Creta noses ahead. It is the easiest to drive, the nicest on the inside, the roomiest and also the best equipped. There's no denying that at 15.62 lakh rupees, the Creta SX optional is expensive but with multiple variants on offer, you'll surely be able to find one in your budget. It might not be the perfect SUV as Hyundai calls it, but for the average buyer, the updated Creta is the best option out there.